Hooray! Data Science Nigeria marks five years of transformational impact. It has been 157,680,000 seconds of running an award-winning and high-impact artificial intelligence learning, research, solution delivery, consulting, and AI startup incubation network. Let us celebrate some of DSN's major milestones. Over 500,000 learners have benefited from the DSN's free online and offline training sessions in artificial intelligence, data science, and digital skill-related classes. The organization runs the most expansive network of AI learning delivery in Africa, with 41 physical learning communities in cities and on campuses. It also organizes annual Pan-Nigeria AI introductory classes across multiple cities through its AI Invasion project. It currently has an online learners network in 49 countries across the world. Data Science Nigeria, through its founder, Bayo Adekombi, published the first AI book for kids in Africa. The book uses cartoon-like characters to demystify and simplify the basic concepts of AI and Python programming. The book is currently being distributed through a nationwide Train the Teachers program to ensure that every child has the foundational knowledge required to competitively prepare for the fourth industrial revolution and the future of work. The annual DSN All Expense Paid Bootcamp has become the numero uno of AI learning in Africa. It brings together some of the best global experts who visit Nigeria physically or connect virtually to teach and mentor young African talents. Each AI bootcamp starts with thousands of participants, with only 400 best participants making it to this intensive learning session. The 2021 edition had learners from over 20 countries. Today, DSN has become the biggest talent recruitment pipeline to leading organizations in Nigeria, providing access to top talents who have been trained through DSN's intensive, hands-on and industry-ready training modules. DSN has also validated its technical capability in the areas of consulting and solution delivery. It has successfully delivered over six million US dollars worth of professional service for leading global multinationals and development agencies like Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, World Bank, Mastercard Foundation, Chevron Nigeria, AI Commons, KPMG, Access Bank, and so many others. DSN remains very strong in artificial intelligence research, with over 13 academic papers published and accepted at peer-reviewed conferences. The inspiring works of DSN have been showcased at all the world's leading AI conferences. From NeurIPS to ICML to ICLR to Deep Learning in DABA. DSN's work in AI for Social Good was a case study of excellence at the foremost conference of the Association for the Advancement of Artificial Intelligence held in New York, USA in 2020, where the founder of DSN spoke as a keynote speaker. DSN AI Lab in Lagos is generously supported with research robots from the Computer Science Department of the University College London complemented with a world-class research workstation donated by NVIDIA. DSN is proud to have won the academic poster at the 21st edition of the ACM Conference on Economics and Computation, EC20, the world's premier conference on the interface of economics and computer science, organized by the Association for Computing Machinery, United States. DSN also won the Best Runner-Up Poster Award at the Deep in Daba in 2019, Africa's foremost AI conference, where the effort of Data Science Nigeria was also recognized with the prestigious Wangari Mathai Impact Award. DSN's work has been acknowledged across the world as a best practice in talent building, indigenous application of AI, community development at scale, early education in AI, and AI for social good. Its work has been reviewed and referenced by the World Economic Forum, UNESCO Science Reports 2020, UNICEF Reports, African Union, Data.org, and many others. DSN was the only African finalist at the XPRIZE Algorithm for COVID Prediction competition. 
DSN was also part of the National COVID Intervention Team on the use of advanced epidemiological machine learning algorithms to flatten the curve. DSN runs a startup incubation center dedicated to artificial intelligence with a current cohort of 12 startups at its new center in Yaba, Lagos, Nigeria. DSN has transited from the generic theory of AI into practical solution development with a focus on how to apply AI at scale in emerging markets. During the COVID-19 lockdown, which created a major learning disruption to many students in Nigeria, DSN invented an adaptive artificial intelligence learning algorithm which was leveraged to deliver effective and interactive learning through basic SMS, feature phones on 2G network, and interactive radio platforms. This effort helped many learners who have no access to the internet or smartphones. Over 8 million learners benefited from this intervention through the funding support of the MasterCard Foundation. DSN has been a revolution with many firsts of its kinds, like the AI Summer School for Kids, Inter-University Machine Learning Competition, AI Hackathons for Top Organizations, Data Scientists on Demand, AI Tutors on Demand for Primary and Secondary Schools, AI Knowledge Box of 20,000 Learning Videos, Free AI for Beginners Free eBook, and its current effort to set up AI libraries at all the top Nigerian universities. As DSN marks its fifth anniversary, it is making some big, bold transition under its five perfect transition mandate to re-strategize for the future. The organization is recalibrating its vision and mission with focus on enabling 1 million AI talents in Africa and building AI solutions that will enhance the quality of lives and well-being of people living in emerging markets. It is a double-fold impact transition. Let us reflect on these big five shifts. Number 1. DSN is transiting into a global operation beyond Nigeria under the DSN brand name, that is Data Scientist Network, with an existing learner's network in almost 50 nations. DSN has become a global knowledge delivery network for the world. All its local and global extensions will now answer the DSN brand name. Number 2. DSN will run a dual business model as a social enterprise with DSN Foundation Nonprofit and DSN AI Innovations Limited, both in Nigeria and in the United Kingdom. This effort will position DSN for sustainability. Number 3. DSN is also changing its consulting model by becoming a distributed talent company. It will run a globally diverse network of expert consultants and partner companies who will collaboratively work with DSN full-time in-house staff to deliver world-class solutions under its new partnership program. Number 4. DSN is launching its learning network with more frequent online masterclasses, project walkthrough sessions, hands-on expert research sessions, and mentoring. These will be facilitated by some of the world's best experts. This expanded learning will also include dedicated programs for professionals, kids, researchers, and developers. Number 5. DSN AI Innovation will be unveiling Spot On, its geospatial AI precision analytics solution for retail and fintech, and ULearn, its AI-powered augmented learning platform that activates learning for every child. DSN is currently building more high-impact products in health, financial inclusion, agriculture, and others. It is a new season at Data Scientist Network, DSN. As DSN unveils its new logo to reflect its global positioning and expansion beyond Nigeria, the organization remains very committed to delivering high-impact AI solutions across the world while expanding its free training and research network across many countries. Welcome to the future with DSN, powering 1 million AI talents and delivering transformational AI solutions for 2 billion people in emerging markets. The 5th DSN anniversary.
Hello everyone and welcome to this session. We are so excited to have you all joining and watching this from all across the world. We're going to have a really exciting time today. This is the first edition of our weekly mentorship for DSN communities, campuses, cities, AI for ladies, ladies in AI, professionals, the entire DSN community of learners, practitioners and partners are all welcome to these sessions. This is starting our pre-recorded sessions and live trainings for all community members. So I welcome you to this session of introduction to predictive analytics. Wherever you're joining from, you can simply on the chat, introduce yourself, where you're joining from, your interests, what you're looking forward to in this session, and let's engage. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce us all to DSN. Data Sciences Network has a commitment to raise 1 million AI talent and build AI solutions that will improve the quality of life and well being of 2 billion people in emerging markets. And this renewed focus will see us delivering on our vision through three core areas that's community for learning and research, and that's why we are here learning and research to push learning to really have high impact learning and research work as well as product development for social impact partnerships as well for solution delivery and it all gets towards building a million ai talents in 10 years our evolution since 2016 out of the 2021 has seen us grow from a learning and community to research and social good applications to corporate support and solution deployment across many products and services now, startups, ventures, AI vertical partnerships, and even national development. You can see our major milestones from 2016 to 2021. It's really been an amazing ride, and we are so excited and honored to have you all as our members driving many impact cases across our communities in Nigeria and all across the world. Some of our major milestones include being the number one artificial intelligence learning community and solution delivery network in Africa. And this was testified to when we won the Maasai Impact Award at Deep Learning in Daba in 2019. Also, we won the best academic poster at the 21st edition of the Global Economic and Computation Conference. ECM, and this was a paper, a poster on shared trust to end poverty and promote financial inclusion. This is a big win for us as DSN. We were also the only African finalists at the 2021 X Prize competition on building advanced AI algorithm to address COVID-19. The only African finalist, it was a huge win for the entire African AI community. We're so honored to have had our work and academic paper presentations at foremost global scientific and practitioner AI conferences all across the globe. Our first artificial intelligence and Python book for elementary students and beginners in Africa is a pioneer to show and to also give access to everyone from the young age to the students in primary school, in the lower grade, high grades, to learn about artificial intelligence. Our technical solutions have now spread to product academic research, in-house research solutions, commercial solutions, social group, and even projects and hackathons. Products like Nalive, Fraud Tracking, the Air Class Monitor, CV Ranker, Spot On for Geospatial Addressing System, You Learn, Macro Tutor, B2B and B2C low cost tutoring pl platform. It's really amazing even to research every laser computer vision, synthetic data generation, semantic enrichment of pigeon, and so many more. You can also look at our commercial solutions, which have all been a testament to the impact of this amazing community, which you all are a part of. Our dedicated AI research lab is also in Yaba, Lagos, Nigeria, where we push the frontiers of AI and make impact across the world. Our new model is built on community product and partnerships. So that is you 
And I'll say you and you, everyone on this call, our community, product delivery partners, expert consultants, intrapreneurs, and service partner networks all coming together to push sustainability as well as impact. When we talk about these partners, uh, we have such a wide range of diverse talent to deliver in best in class solutions. Top of the game in AI data science, education training providers, data science project or project delivery, consultants and management and deployment services, you name it. And the whole goal is just to ensure that the goal of getting a million AI talent is sustainably reached and do our business model for our global impact also through DSN AI innovations. And this is building cross-country AI learning and research communities, deploying solutions that will enhance the quality of life and well-being of 2 billion people in emerging markets, as I mentioned earlier. And this is through career tech, fintech, retail tech, edtech, platform tech, and health tech. There's a lot going on and there's so much you can be a part of this year at DSN. Our AI incubation participants that we started off with, uh, some of these, you can see their logos, and we're so excited for the amazing things that these startups are doing and will do in the coming months. And here is the roadmap that each startup takes in their journey as a DSN incubated startup. There are free workstations, access to knowledge, access to finance, idea branding, and at the end, networking and mentoring. They have the opportunity to network and be mentored by the top industry experts across the world. This is really amazing. And as you are well aware, our advisory board, our world-class advisory board, headed by our chairman, Dr. Uyi Stewart, we are so honored and humbled to have such an amazing board of world-class mentors and people leading this organization so thank you all so much for your commitment to this community thank you for all you do thank you for joining the session and we look forward to more impact together as dsa today's session is on predictive analytics and we are so excited to have had this session pre-recorded by our facilitator timothy motzi is a lead machine learning engineer at cbz holding He's an experienced machine learning engineer with a demonstrated history of working in e-learning, financial and artificial intelligence in industry. He has a wide range of experience leading projects that talk to research and implementing entity extraction for multilingual job description datasets and improve query understanding features to optimize such experience. So a lot of natural language processing, um, NLP folks, you want to, you, you want to be at his next sessions because he is one of our mentors It will be in our mentorship program this year uh you want to be in that program absolutely so let's keep our community contributions up let's attend sessions let's join let's collaborate and push learning his work also focuses a lot on entity recognition i think i mentioned that predictive classification and regression problems so we are in for an amazing ride today so once again i welcome you all to an enjoyable session on predictive analytics and i wish us the best of impact this year cheers hello world i'm simba Mosi. i always want to say that it's much better than typing it out okay so um i'm excited right i'm really really excited i'm gonna be walking you through um, an introduction to predictive analytics uh we're gonna have just an introductory course it's not gonna be deep there's no technical knowledge required it's just me basically walking you through the history of how we got here and what it's been used for and why you would want to learn it okay so um i'm not gonna spend much time because we don't have that much time anyway um my main interests are in tech, uh, mainly in the AI space. Currently, I'm the lead machine learning engineer for CBZ Holdings. And um, yes, I am one of your mentors here for Data Science Nigeria, but I'm actually based in Zimbabwe, born and bred. Uh, so all my operations are based in Zim. Uh, so I'm looking forward to meeting you guys and 
having further interactions even after this. Thank you very much. All the slides and course material will be made available to you after the recording. So don't worry, everything will be there. And feel free to reach out if you need further clarification on anything else and further engagements are welcome. So uh, our main agendas are highlighted below. Uh, we will give you um, an intro to big data. So this is fundamental for you to understand what big data is and how this term became to be, how it was coined and why it was coined. And knowing the foundations of any particular topic helps you in uh, further applying uh, new ideas in the field, mainly because you understand everything from first principle. Okay. Uh, so knowing why, why everybody would want to ask why, why, why would you want to learn anything from first principle? It's because if your foundation is strong, you can better apply anything else later on. Even if the technology changes, you can adapt easier. It's better for you to adapt because you know everything from the base. Okay. And then, uh, what exactly analytics is? Why? We are focusing on predictive analytics right now. Why is it a hot topic? And then uh, trying to define what AI, machine learning, and deep learning, all these buzzwords, what exactly uh, they entail. Whether they're just there for the hype or they're there to stay. This is something that you need to understand uh, to build this knowledge, this foundation of knowledge for you to grasp all the concepts that might come when you're going through further literature on your own or going through YouTube videos or anything like that, you will be at least knowledgeable on these key terms and everything else that's involved. Uh, then we'll give you an analytics, uh, predictive analytics technical overview of the model that's used uh, when we're training a particular model or any architecture and the steps required for you to draw a conclusion. These will be covered within this uh, talk. And then um, we will go to the applications of predictive analytics, what we're using it for currently, uh, and any further involvement within the tech space. And uh, give you a brief understanding or introduce you to some of the tools that are actually being used right now uh, in the business world. So back then, uh, let's say in the 1980s, right? There weren't that many forms of uh, data decision making because the information wasn't really that big. Uh, everything was stored, was stored in hard copy folders I had copy files, uh, you just put it in a storage cabinet. There wasn't that much data to go about. So the techniques back then, you there wasn't much room for error. Uh, so you had your uh, traditional techniques, or you have a, a specialist in an area, uh, probably by using the thumb techniques, because they've been seeing particular trends uh, of this data for a while. And then now they can make an educated guess, if you would say, uh, based on anything. So if it was a stock market back then, there weren't that many data points to look at. Uh, so the trades weren't that much. So one would predict uh, what would happen. Unlike now, you have more assets to monitor and other factors that determine the value of any given uh, product. So we can say there's Bitcoin now which wasn't there in the past. Uh, there's technology that wasn't available back then. If we look at the meta universe, there's just so many variables that can affect the price unit of any stock, which is more than one human mind can fathom and get to provide an accurate assessment of anything, uh, given that, that, that technique. And then some people just wing it, right? You just take your gut feeling and then you conclude that the best course of action is to take A, B, C, D. But then more often than not, especially in this day and age, uh, 
you you end up losing. Yeah, you might be lucky, but it, that's not really what you want to do. You want to have a data driven approach to anything that you're doing. Uh, and then the cycle, which is predominantly used in the corporate world, uh, is illustrated on the left, where you have to first understand the situation. So you have to take a domain expert in whatever you're doing, then probably define the problem and then define the objectives so that you have measurable um, KPIs at the end of the cycle. Whether this approach was successful or not, was there a successful implementation or not? You diagnose the problem, then within your diagnosis, you need uh, several alternatives to map out, uh, map out possible actions to take uh, to see which values provide the best intended outcome. So if you have three options, right, uh, you need at least three different uh, accuracy points. So definitely the one with the highest accuracy is the one that wins at the end of it all. Uh, then you choose the best alternative, then you implement the alternative. But then like we were saying, nowadays, there's just so much data going around. So there's too much for one person to just sit and consume and then get to a probable uh, solid conclusion. All right. So uh, this then necessitated the involvement of technology in a field, in whatever field you're looking at, be it finance, uh, be it in the food industry. Now technology is being involved to help people better um, make these decisions right so everybody wants a data driven approach and with any technology that comes there's what we call the gata hyper sorry let me say that again now gatna hyper hype cycle okay so the ghc uh comes with there's the initial increase uh, in people's interest, mainly because people don't understand, they just want to jump onto the big wave of what's happening. Uh, we'll give you an example of uh, the dot com bubble. A lot of people didn't understand what it was, but then all these buzzwords are just being thrown around and people just jumping onto the train without actually understanding what it was, right? So there was an inflation of interest from people or the end user, the consumers of the, of, of the tech. Um, so when you get to that peak, that's when most bubbles burst, right? Um, if uh, there was the first AI winter, back then uh, people just wanted to adopt uh, AI when there were all these weird promises that were being proposed, but then the technology wasn't right then. So this was mainly after the initial computer beat a human when it came to a game of chess. So now everybody was just like, okay, if this computer can beat a human being in a game of chess, what can we do with this? Oh my gosh, now we have this world of unlimited possibilities. But then uh, I believe it was in the 1970s and then the tech wasn't ready then. But now um, we can actually implement this algorithms, this, uh, conclusions that are computer generated because we now have GPUs, we have faster CPUs. Uh, there's the Moore's law where the compute power is increasing exponentially. It was like uh, multiplying by a factor of two every year ever since. So now computers have gotten faster and better at calculating. So now all this information that we now have is easier for computers to just consume and then generate an output which wasn't available back then so um normally when when this there's a disillusionment stage when people start looking at the tech objective is this the next big thing is this what we've been looking for or people were just uh, over promising or they're selling us snake oil and then the first AI winter proved people wrong, right? Uh, mainly the AI researchers. Then there was a, a, a dark age where people weren't really adopting AI. But then in the early 2000s now, 
when we are when we are GPUs and faster processors. AI rose again, and then now people were looking at it at further applications of this technology and to see if it's actually going to deliver from the previous promises. And ever since it's been doing so, we now have companies like Tesla, with Microsoft embedding AI into almost all the products, with Google, you name it, Netflix, it's just there. And now, if we want to see how much data is actually being produced per day, right? Uh, we can look at the chart below. So this is just a snapshot. Uh, the survey for this was done in 2021, which was last year, as of this video recording. So uh, for every 60 seconds, this was the amount of data that was being generated. So I believe in the far past 10 years, we've produced more than 50% of all the information that was ever put in the world. So this just speaks to the amount of the, to the magnitude of information that's just there for people to consume now and people to sift through. So that's when we got to this stage of calling it big data because there is just a huge chunk of information to process now. And we want to derive meaningful insights from it. And if we're looking at, let's say Netflix, we're looking at your viewing patterns. Are you watching a video to it? It, it finishes. What are your preferences? We want to drive a pattern of the videos you've been watching. Uh, there, there's so many things that we're looking at right now, which weren't really uh, key factors back then. So uh, in this big data era, the, the four Vs of big data, the four main points, which is the volume, the variety, velocity, and veracity. So uh, now data is being uh, produced in bulk. Uh, back then, I remember when uh, it was 2008, I think, we had mobile phones which had two gig memory cards. But right now, a two gig memory card is useless. Uh, you can just uh, fill that up with images that you take within an hour. So now we have uh, SSDs, we have memory cards that go up to one terabyte, two terabytes. This just shows how much data has been booming from on, on a year to year basis. And then we're looking at the variety of data. We're not just, unlike uh, back in the day when we had um, SQL databases where everything was structured. Now there's just so many formats of data. We're looking at your images, we're looking at your audio, your video, your uh, location information. All that is now being generated and we need someone to consume it to conclude something that is meaningful, right? Uh, so all this has to be computed in some form and manner in a timeless fashion as well, right? Then the velocity, like we, we look at the chat before, we have 500 hours of content that is being uploaded to YouTube every 60 seconds. So for every minute we have, we have 500 hours of content. So one is to 500, one, one minute as to 500 hours. That is a lot of content for anyone to keep up with. And you can't, uh, unlike the traditional approach where people would have to sit down and watch these videos and give recommendations based on a human point of view, it's, it's no longer feasible right now because for every minute on YouTube, there's 500 hours of content. So that's uh, in, in, in the space of a year, that's more time than anyone will have in the lifetime to give a proper recommendation for anything. And then if your business or company is doing that, you're not going to catch up, all right? And then the veracity as uh, in regards to the quality of the data that you have. Uh, during the tenure of Donald Trump, there was this uh, term that was now just doing around uh, fake news. You want something that is close to the true value, the ground truth as much as possible, because the accuracy of the information that you have is also determining the quality of the product that you have. You do not want something, uh, you do not want a Netflix algorithm, for instance, to 
to give bad predictions for the next uh, episode to watch. That's why Netflix is a hit right now because it's keeping people glued on. There's no watch time. Then um, we get on to analytics, right? So with all this information that's being produced, we want to make something, some meaningful conclusions uh, that are associated with this data, right? Uh, so if we look at the old techniques, they, 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 they tried to give this uh, predictive approach, but then it was in a limited capacity, mainly because that was the data that was given. Right? And when we have the data we have now, when we analyze it, we might want to uh, see previous patterns in data. So um, we can take uh, meteorological data, for instance. We want to predict weather patterns. So uh, we start off, we look at a piece of land, right? We take a field. We look at the previous data. How are the rainfall patterns in that particular area for the past 10 years? Is it okay for us to have tobacco or this piece of land? So looking at uh, analyzing uh, this uh, historic data, uh, this hindsight approach of taking this archive data for the past 10 years, analyzing the rainfall patterns, the sunlight, there was a, the tropical storms that were in that particular area. Uh, it gives us the insight on, uh, on uh, guiding us on what to produce right now, what crops to plant. Should we go ahead and put tobacco? Is that the best course of action right now? Or now when we're predicting in the next 10 years, right? If we're gonna be, have crop rotation on our field, should we start with legumes? Is it best for us to start with tobacco based on this information that we are having good rains or we are not having rains at all? Is this the best crop to have? And for the next 10 years, is this dry spell going to persist? So now, with all this information that we have, there's a lot of data and a lot of insights that you can distill from it, right? And uh, we, we can start with uh, describing anything that you're looking at. Uh, if we're going back to our farming scenario, our farming example. We're looking at the previous 10 years of data. What crops have been uh, have been planted? What disease outbreaks were there? What went wrong? What went right? How can you best improve this product that we had? Right? And then when we discover all oh, these uh, these variables, these attributes of our area of interest, we can now uh, predict the yield. Right? Um, if we're gonna be planting 10 hectares of tobacco. What is our projected yield based on this past data that we have? And then we can actually have, um, we can actually give, uh, let's say, uh, if we are suppliers, we can give them a projection of how much we're going to be giving them at the end of the farming season. Instead of just having all this stock staying in your barn without any action plan towards it. Then, um, in order to get to these insights, the techniques and tools that we need to use. Um, so a lot of people have come across the terms AI, machine learning, deep learning, but then there wasn't much uh, explanation on what these things are. Right, so let me just give you a watered down explanation of what these are so that you have an appreciation of these terms and you are knowledgeable the next time somebody says them and you can continue the conversation further. Uh, so artificial intelligence is the blanket term for any technology that aims to mimicking human behavior. So we're trying to give humans, sorry, we're trying to give machines the ability to think like you, to act like you, be like us with the main goal of making our lives easier and automating tests so that we have better things to work on, right? So uh, within uh, artificial intelligence, 
there's a branch of artificial intelligence called machine learning. And machine learning is the field that many use looks at the algorithms to use, right? The algorithms that help us teach these machines how to learn like humans, like how to get to conclusions like humans, how to think like us, what persons, what patterns to look at. So um when we look at let's say your camera for instance, uh they use what are called convolutional neural networks. They process a visual data the same way we perceive it. That's why when you point your camera at a, at a human being, it can actually now recognize that this is a face, this person is smiling. Uh, if you have your palm shutter on, it detects that there's a palm now. I can take it an, an image because it has detected uh, that palm there. Uh, there's image segmentation. It can detect that this is a pet, this is a plant. Um, object, uh, ob object detection as well is also uh, another example of how computers are now perceiving things the same way we have a visual appreciation of the world around us. And then um, there's um, NLP. Uh, if you notice nowadays, there's a boom of this text-to-speech translators and back and forth. Uh, there's, that's the technique that we call natural language processing. The ability for machines to understand one language and derive a summary from it and then give a predicted output of what you're doing. Uh, that's also what's used when you are typing on your phone, when you have your auto predict on, knowing what you're probably going to say next. So it project, uh, predicts the next phrase, the next word, or the next image that you're going to use based on the sentiment that you've already put in. Right? So uh, with machine learning, uh, they are what are called traditional uh, algorithms, traditional machine learning algorithms. Uh, so these are your random forests, your support vector machines, right? And then later on, as the technology went on further, uh, with the invention of uh, GPUs, graphics processing units, we ended up having what are called uh, neural networks, right? So the study of just using these neural networks to conclude something or to make a model that predicts something is what we call deep learning, right? So what deep learning is when you have uh, two or more hidden layers to make a prediction. So what do I mean by hidden layers? Hidden layers are more of neural networks that are fashioned uh, just like the human brain that are being used to derive you know, infer data from what whatever data set you you have right so um if we go back to images if you have a set of cats a data set of cats and another data set of dogs you're gonna have uh, layers uh connected together to allow the network the computer to take uh attributes that distinguish a cat from a dog so then later on, when you give it uh, an example of whether this is a cat or dog, the prediction is based on those things that the neural networks has learned. Right? So um, you often hear me using the term model a lot. Right? A model is what the computer has learned and you store it to a file on the computer's hard disk. So that it's, it's more of like an artificial brain for the computer. So uh, the predictive learning technique that's usually used is the OSEMN process, which is pronounced as awesome, the awesome process, right? So you obtain your data, usually through data mining, right? Um, you harvest it from the internet, be it your Twitter feeds, your YouTube uh, likes and subscriber count, the comments on YouTube, uh, what people, what people sentiment are on social media platforms like Facebook, right? You take it, uh, from the relevant source. And like we were saying with the four Vs of, uh, big data. Now we have a lot of data formats. We have a lot of data sources. The, there's some transformation that you need to do to that data to make it more meaningful. And then 
extrapolate the information that you require, right? So there's that process of scrubbing, which is data cleaning, uh, where let's say if you have your images on Google Photos, you might want to get the geolocation of where you took the most number of photos. So you're gonna actually remove the actual physical image and then just take the geo coordinates of each and every image, then probably put it on a map so that you get to conclude your, the, the places where most of your images originated from, right? So that's the process of data cleaning. Uh, you might have probably efforts within a medical facility. You want to determine uh, which images uh, for cancerous cells probably in a lung, right? And then the data set you have is filled with uh, different organs. You have lungs, you have hands, you have legs there. You first would want to just segment the portion of just lungs so that you just do uh, the classification on that particular data set of interest. And then when you're exploring data, right, uh, this is when you're trying to find the key points that affect your accuracy the most. So if, um, let me give you an example of a stock market, right? So what, what, what elements uh, affect the stock value? So um, we might have holidays. So you might find if it's the festive season, retail stocks might might be valued more there because people are stocking up. You might have uh, tech companies having a surge in share price because more people are buying gadgets for the loved ones as gifts, right? You have uh, natural disasters. Was there a natural disaster on this particular day? So with certain disasters, certain uh, impacts, I show on, on the stock market. Like, I'll give you an example of COVID. When there was the COVID pandemic, pharmaceutical companies who had a surge in share price because now people are trying to get uh, the next vaccine. People are betting on which company is most probably going to get the next vaccine, right? So uh, when we're looking at that, uh, pharmaceutical companies' share prices went up, but then the avian in aviation industry went down because not many planes were moving around as much anymore. So these are the main attributing factors to whether or not a particular feature uh, will give the best outcome or influences the most. So uh, if you're training your model, this is the stage we call feature engineering, right? Then when you're training your model, it's literally like, training an infant from school, teaching them how to get to certain conclusions, telling them that this is wrong, this is right. And then when you get to your conclusion with a high accuracy, if you have a model which is a, which has a 95% accuracy, and if you're happy with 95% uh, in your domain, then you save that model. So it's more of uh, taking whatever the computer has learned and making it permanent. So if you have a um, model, a computer model that is now good at detecting handwritten digits, right? You trained your model on the MS data set for handwritten digits and it scores uh, an accuracy of 100%. And you're happy with your 100%. You're gonna store it and then you now use it, you deploy it into production. And then you are guaranteed that the fact that when you trained it and you evaluated it, you got an accuracy score of 100. Then production is supposed to give you the same result. Okay. So now we're looking at the main applications within predictive analytics nowadays. So uh, we've seen the power of AI, right? We started from the case of just seeing what it can do, where it came from, and where we probably be. Uh, in the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. But then we want to have an appreciation of what's currently being done, where is it being used, and what can we, where, where can we look for it, right? Uh, so I, I can give you an example of the finance industry because I've spent most of my 
uh, working life in the financial sector. Uh, you have anti-money laundering. Uh, you don't want people ex expropriating funds. And yes, goes unnoticed. You want to detect those people who are scamming people. Uh, you want to detect um, the next Ponzi scheme that's uh, booming in your country. You want to make sure that there's sanity within your financial sector. So it's not just a matter of detecting when it happens. Because when something has already happened, some people have already gone bankrupt. Some people's livelihoods have already been affected. You want to predict it before it even happens so that people don't lose the money. Pensioners don't lose the hard-earned saving. So you try to predict something before it even happens. So if there's a certain pattern within your uh, account holders, right, and you detect that for our data set of these Ponzi schemes, the next client is going to, now this person is exhibiting traits of being the next Ponzi scheme. You already start deploying the necessary measures to monitor it and then cut them before they even start the operation and then save your individuals, right? You save your citizens from losing the hard earned money. You want to uh, avoid issues of card cloning, fraud. You want to make sure that every transaction that happens is legit. You do not want to have a case where you're now making follow-ups when somebody's transaction has been wiped or some, when someone's account has been wiped clean. It's already too late for that. But you want to make sure that you curb this, 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 this whole pandemic of these illicit dealers who are trying to take advantage of whatever um, systems that are already there in place. Which So now we're trying to fuse those traditional technique, uh, traditional systems with smarter systems, with AI systems, okay. And then um, I'll also give you an example of, let's say you have a financial product that you have, right? And then you want to make sure that you're retaining clients. You don't want to lose your clients. You look at the patterns of what systems and what solutions have been used most and why uh, your people are leaving. Uh, what's keeping your people there so that you improve on your weaknesses and you make sure that you do not drop any products that are already working well so uh, if you're going to be laying off people right based on the performance of any particular product you want it to be a iterative uh, decision you don't want to make it based on uh, human emotion or guessing because if you do that, then you might end up losing more by losing experienced personnel and then losing a good product that was actually generating revenue for you. So these are some of the things that you actually see the impact of predictive analytics, forecasting something before something before it even happens, right? And then uh, I'll give you uh, a brief list of the tools that are being used currently and how they're being used. So uh, we're, we're with the awesome process, right? We start by data gathering. So we're checking uh, the sources of this information, which ones are required, which ones have the most relevant information for what we want to do. So uh, this one is for managing uh, internal information. So when I say internal information, this is for an organization, right? So you have your CRM, your customer relations, uh, relations management tools. You want to get to a point where you satisfy your clients as much as possible, right? So you're taking that, you're taking all that information from your customers. It might be your, like the location data, the media history like uh this the sentiments online what are your customers saying about your products what are they doing are they recommending people are they complaining you want all that information right and then you transform it so usually uh you're using uh programming languages like python to scrub this information uh you're using your apis because most service providers now provide a programming uh layer to access the, the, the platform. So you have uh, Facebook, they have the Graph APIs, they have, you have Twitter, you have LinkedIn, they all provide um, 
APIs to extract the information that you need. Uh, but then if you do not have, you can just crawl the web for that particular information that you need, right? Then uh, the ETL layer where you're extracting, that's the extraction transformation layer. You're extracting information that you require. So you'd want to automate this process. Right? And the tools mainly from Hadoop, uh, those are usually the ones that are industry leading uh, in this process of automating the process of extracting data from these data sources and transforming it into a particular usable format for your organization, just narrowing down what you require. And then we store it somewhere. So you have a data warehouse. Uh, so people are familiar with the terms data warehouses and data lakes. So these are just stores of information, right? First, you just collect all that information before it has been processed into any meaningful format, into any meaningful data format. And then after processing it, you now um, present it, right? Uh, after some analysis on, on your data. Uh, so the presentation might be in the form of dashboards. It might be in the form of predictions, right? So. Um, if you want to predict the likelihood of your customer making the next purchase, you might actually want that being in a graphical format. So uh, if you want it in a graphical format, there's Tableau, uh, there's Google Data Studio, there's um, Microsoft Power BI, there are a lot of graphical tools that you can use. You can even make your own dashboards uh, for that. So uh, main tools that are actually used within the AI space or the predictive analytics space are Python is a primary programming language. You have uh, open source tools from Hadoop. So from Hadoop, there's uh, Apache Kafka, there's uh, Spark, there's uh, Hive. Um, then you will have your databases. You have your SQL databases or SQL, no, not SQL databases. So for SQL databases, you have your uh, Microsoft, so Microsoft SQL Server, you have your Oracle databases, you have your Proskis SQL uh, databases. And for your not SQL databases, right, um, for storing information that has a variable changing fields, variable changing attributes, you have your Cassandra, you have your MongoDB, um, you have your HBase as well. These are tools that are usually used, and if you want to uh, get started in the field, I would I advise you to take a look at this and then do more research on it. And then if you want to look at a particular layer and near, narrow down on it, be my guest. I think that's the best approach when it comes to these things. Uh, look at one particular item of interest to you, then do as much research as possible on the uh, key area of interest so um that was all i had for you today if you have anything else that you would want us to uh, collaborate on please do feel free to reach out and thank you very much for your time i really enjoyed being your mentor for this session wow amazing thank you so much Simbarashi, we are glad to have you as a mentor uh, for this fantastic session on predictive analysis and also, thank you to everyone who have joined our first community meetup session for the year 2022. I'm sure we all, we all learned a lot in today's session. Kindly drop your comment into the comment section. I am sure our team and today's speaker will attend to all your comments in the comment section. Also, the link to our annual learning calendar for the year 2022 has been shared in the comment section. Please ensure you visit it to help you keep updated on all our learning events this year, 2022. Thank you all once again, and I wish you all a wonderful day ahead. Thank you for joining the call. Thank you so much.